Uh, dear friends, uh, I am before you, Venkat Shivkumar, to the students of law colleges. And this video is in particularly made for the resolution professionals across the nation. And uh, we are going to take up discussion on the problems that are being faced by the home buyers. To have a dream house is anybody's uh, uh, life uh, objective because ultimately we need to stay in a comfortable place. And we come across uh, uh, various uh, home buyers, uh, uh, the promoters, uh, uh, well reputed promoters offering various facilities, various promises. And you can see in the last uh, uh, 10 years or so, uh, most of the people have defaulted. The construction started, and then uh, the, uh, the, the builders enter into an arrangement with the uh, uh, landlords. A joint venture agreement is made and the power of attorney will be given by the landlord to the promoters and the promoters uh, will uh, promise to uh, transfer the undivided share of land in return for uh, a, the, that is security. They take money, they promise so many things. And uh, this is a uh, the situation now it is developing thousands and thousands of uh, poor home buyers are left to lurch and uh, i was uh, i started my career in a real estate company uh, in a, a very big company i was the started as chartered accountant in a, in a big company mm -hmm. and then they expand so much and then they lose control of it first step so a lot of money is there a lot of cash is there in the real estate and they, they go on expanding. And uh, in that company, when uh, it is in 1985, I used to, I was the finance controller, I just passed CA, but then I got it. And I used to tell them, myself and my friend who became the judge of Supreme Court, we were uh, both together were the advisors. I was in the finance, he was in the legal side. Then finally, I used to advise the promoter, the pro director, that you know, the installments, don't think installments are your funds. The installments comprises of three components. One is the land component, and uh, the other one is the profit, and the balance is the construction cost. For example, at that point in time, we constructed a very posh uh, um, com commercial complex, first time, swimming pool, everything. And uh, there, it was sold for, uh, if I remember correct, uh, 325 rupees per square foot. Today it's going at 25,000 rupees, the same place in Hadders Road. And we got, uh, one day we sold everything, 30,000 square feet. That's a very big money in 85, you know. And uh, so I was doing that. Then we expanded into various uh, uh, the sectors throughout India. And uh, but I used to tell the uh, the managing director who was uh, very much depend uh, advisor, financial advisory and legal advice, both of us. We used to tell them that there are three components. If you take three hundred twenty five rupees per square feet, hundred rupees is per square feet was the profit, and hundred rupees per square feet was the construction cost that time, and one twenty five is the uh, land cost. But then they are never allocate the land to the reinvestment. Construction cost, you have to use it, reinvest it in construction. Profit, you can do a strategic planning. But then they never realized and they went into share uh, issues and then 110 times it's oversubscribed. That's uh, then they, the bubble burst. And now as a resolution professional, as a liquidator, we are seeing uh, and as I see a council for many real estate uh, promoters or the home buyers in particular. I realize that there should be some solution and uh, how, what should be the solution. And uh, we were up in Rera, these cases were going on. And then I shared that experience. And uh, one day I remember uh, in the Honorable. Uh, Chairperson, IBBM, Mr. Ravi Mittal. Uh, Mr. Ravi Mittal 
he is the chairman who took over uh, in 23 in the place of uh, 22 or 23 in the place of uh, Dr. Sahu. Dr. Sahu is a PhD, widely read, very nice gentleman. And he did so much for IBC in terms of regulations, making the, the, the entire structure. But then I filed several pills on that, uh, reforming the IBBI. Uh, IBBI is one of the main uh, executive authority, you know, in a uh, subordinate uh, legislation, as we all know that. The legislative power is being delegated to the uh, executive, the administrative powers. And these people, many of them, are nobody had uh, uh, the experience in reviving companies, though they are in charge of uh, ensuring it. And uh, so we brought in a lot of uh, uh, suggestions we made, but uh, yeah, even Union of India agreed with the suggestions, but never they implemented. But thereafter, uh, this gentleman came. In my opinion, he's a brilliant uh, leader, brilliant leader. Recently, one meeting, he called me. He came to meet uh, a conference and he was talking and uh, inaugurating and all, all the NCLT presidents and all that. But somehow he found a time, then he came and uh, talked to me. Very nice and very gentle. And he was speaking Hindi. And uh, he wanted in real estate issues, we are interested. Why do why he came to me is because in the liquidation rules and regulations, you know, 16.9.22, that amendment came, new rules and regulations. Prior to that, uh, three to four months, uh, public uh, comments they have announced. So then I analyzed everything and uh, sent it to him for presentation. One of the things I made, actually, that draft resolution, if you see, is like a regulation 31A10. Uh, where the liquidator can be removed. And uh, because liquidators were exercising too much power, there is no provision in the court. And uh, that can be challenged, that power given to the, uh, the stakeholders consultation committee to remove. So I told them that is not correct, sir. Liquidator is in a different platform. Uh, resolution professional is in a different platform. See, your process is different, guided by the uh, COC. Whereas the uh, liquidator he enters into the shoes of the promoters, is there is an equidistance uh, triangle. Uh, one is with the promoters, another with the secured stakeholders. <clears throat> then I told them, okay, well, it be as it may. But you don't pass, uh, the secured uh, creditors can pass a resolution to remove them. And, uh, we have to see this balancing because we're exercising too much power, litigation and all taking place. There is no prov provision to remove the liquidator. So then came the, I told them, you have to add one word, reasons to be recorded when they pass the resolutions. Secondly is remuneration uh, for the work done. Abruptly, if somebody is removed, they become insecure. Always there is insecurity problem that you work very hard. Results may not come. But by the time results come, the, the bankers, particularly public sector bankers, would like to remove you anytime. Then what is happening? And litigation is a, is a business legislation. And recently, when I was challenging uh, in petition 16650, section 204 of IBC code, then Honorable Chief Justice uh, Gangapur Wala and Bharat Kumar, Justice Bharat Kumar, Bharat, uh, sir, they asked me, this is a business legislation. And uh, this business is a policy. So how we want as the courts to keep on interfering with it? <clears throat> it's a settled position of law. The government uh, the, the should be given chance to experiment. I said the IBC is a legislation where the creditors are in control now. Earlier, debtor is in control. And that is being shifted to the creditors in control. That is called policy. To implement that, we need regulations. That will have impact on various people. And it will impact the fundamental rights of many people. Therefore, natural justice to be read in. And that cannot be read as a policy decision, my lads. And they appreciated and recorded it in the review petition also when I filed that. So what happens now today to IBBI is they are not having practical experience in this. They go on past legislations. And then if any disciplinary case against a person, 
they have no they are not thinking the resolution professionals are their members they are the people who are paying money and why don't business legislation you know the malfeasors are the basic criteria for punishing or not punishing we are not getting into that but then i was telling mr rivi ravi metal that any legislation that your uh, your honor is going to make it you must interact with the uh, adjudicating authorities fine brains are there and you can see honorable chennai bench uh, dear friends uh, this bench today a bench to today i was just hearing a real estate uh, thing also then the lordships uh, honorable adjudicating authority both of the judges judicial member and technical member they said we want to see the smiles in the um, smiles in the faces of the home buyers the poor home buyers all right there is a law we will be within the parameters of the law but more importantly we would like to ensure that they get houses instead of getting into the uh, the crux of the thick of the legislation and the legal litigations and all and uh, true to their things there so many cases are coming before them and uh, the way they handle uh, is really appreciative and uh, the same is the honorable justice sanjeev jain sir and venkat ramanan ramanan is the first bench they are also focusing on the relief oriented approach and uh, i can talk a lot on these things but then i would like to share how these uh, uh, home buyers can be benefited forget about all others like liquidator or resolution professional or the car process how to make it happen without uh, litigation and the house should be got to them within a, a short span of time and uh, what are all the hiccups which we have faced the first thing friends we come to this promoters and the uh, landlords and the joint venture agreements we see that in uh, to the experience which you have seen as i told in the beginning itself the promoters also don't have in there is lot of regulations now they are having but at the same time if you see that it is over expansion and this is a case which requires this is a, this is a case which requires uh what we call it as financial discipline that's the most important aspect of the uh, thing but as you become bigger and bigger the greed goes on and on and that results in the troubles now with the normal pattern because uh, one is the promoters they really work they want to keep their uh, goodwill and uh, they very careful but at some point in time something was wrong with them because of the financial uh, indiscipline that's what we can say the financial indiscipline is the basic root as i told you in 1985 till date and we are meeting the topmost promoters who all got into trouble but then there are some other people whose main intention is to cheat the gullible home buyers and they will give so many advertisements so many promises that they make uh, and the people from all all over the country world they invest they are all working people the home buyers so they will go and then inspect then they'll say we have done this they are good we are not saying they are very good promoters who are following it some though they get into some troubles now we are coming to a situation where the apartments are not delivered to the persons over a period of 8 to 10 years these are the main cases that uh, the honorable nclt chennai bench is looking at uh, this is where uh, we would like to uh, discuss what is the real experience that uh, we came to came across and uh, this is what uh, very nicely the lordships have understood and then focusing on that you are a liquidator you are a car process all that fine don't bother we are concerned about you but at the same time we are more concerned about the poor home buyers that is a first, first approach the honorable nclt chennai bench is taking now we this particular uh, uh, video is to supply supplement their thinking because they must be very ex much experienced the way they are looking at the issue uh, 
resolving the matter. But the first problem is, they are not, uh, they, this is a whole story, is there eight years your house is not given. Obviously you are in trouble. Then uh, landlord is uh, absconding and you have to bring him and do, he is not going to do. And uh, promoters are already guy and uh, uh, the joint venture agreements, arbitration they go and they go to rare cases are filed. And uh, home buyers, there is a problem. Actually, there are 100 home buyers are there. All of them spread over India. They are working people. They are people who are working. And therefore, how long they are uh, worried about their uh, uh, this thing. But then what more they can do? They can do nothing. And they expect somebody to do it. And uh, there comes some few people. And what happens is, the, uh, they form some associations or UNT and all. And uh, there comes the promoters. The promoters and builders, we call promoters, builders, landlord, they'll catch the uh, two, three, four people in that group. And uh, they will incite all kinds of problems. Generally, friends, wherever, you know, a resolution professional or liquidator is there, their interest also is like the NCLT because if you are going to give houses to so many people, and that will be a great achievement. Forget about the uh, other factors any given time. But these people file so many, these three to four people, they, one side is, the uh, association is formed of 100 people and uh, they are ready to complete their construction. What happens now? They would have invested money. Some people would have invested 100%. Some people cleverly would have not invested 50%. Balance 50 to be paid. And uh, the promoter, uh, the builder will say, I have not received the money. You pay us money. We will complete it. Like that, they will be promising. Some reasons they'll tell. These persons will say, compensation, at least rent we have lost and we have spent so much money. How to go about it? If you see this honorable NCLT, and this is what I was telling Mr. Ravi Mittal also, is going on thinking of past, there is no end. So if the home buyers feel the resolution professional is not doing his job. Leave him, throw him out. Because unless there is a harmonious relationship, where is the question of this gentleman coming and sitting in between the judges and then home buyers complaining, judges asking questions, you dare get no money and administration, IVBA controls and various questions are arisen. So these points have been understood by their lordships. So now first step is, all right, uh, you there are let us say and uh, 25 apartments or the 100 30 apartments at different stages of completion. All right, you people open an account and you estimate the account. You appoint the engineers. You put the money and then you see that work in progress done. So it's your money under the supervision of the NCL. The lordships are though very uh, tough. They they can they are very harsh in terms to you error in the law is home buyers. But at the same time, that is required. You, know, you need to finish the job. Ultimately, who is right, who is wrong? No, you got the house. You have got the house or you not got the house. And that is where this, uh, this is a very good thing, which I request Honorable Leonard uh, uh, Ravi Mittal, sir, IBBI chairperson, to uh, discuss with the adjudicating authorities. There are Wonderful people are there. And one or two, that's a different thing, previous thing. But they are they at that age, at 60 plus, they're coming and joining. Majority, in, uh, they, they want to do something. You are going to give 100 houses to the people who lost hopes, who are located at the place, various places. So then the, there are two aspects are there. Promoter or the builder or the landlord, whatever it is. There are certain claims against him. That's the legal thing. I'm talking about the liquidation issue. CAR process is different. There are people who paid the money, their underwear share not registered. Therefore, they can ask the money back uh, with interest. And there are people whose underwear share has been sold and they cannot take back. In that case, you have to complete the uh, apartments and give it to them. And in that case, these, these people, home buyers have to invest. The people are ready to invest. But under the supervision of NCLT, there is an assurance. We tried a lot. And when the matter was just started, suddenly 
there are three people who are very vociferous. They try to make blames about the uh, liquidator, file complaint against the liquidator, etc., etc. They'll do. We don't know what is the reason whether they are connected to the promoters and uh, etc. But ultimately, <clears throat> uh, the liquidation job, liquidator's job of this uh, home buyers is a real headache, which the IBBI has to see. IBBI is waiting to attack the person. And a person is working for months and months, administration costs, what a huge cost we have to incur. And litigation costs are very high. You don't get lawyers in especially IBC proceedings and all. Big lawyers means they're charging three lakhs per hearing, per day. And uh, small lawyer, 30,000. So therefore, <clears throat> The approach of Honorable NCLT Chennai benches needs to be, I mean, the IBBI should take it into consideration and their advice will be the best advice to define and design a better regulatory regime for the home buyers. And thank you, my dear friends. Um, yes. So this is what I wanted to uh, ensure. I summarized the uh, explanation is this, that today, even in RERA also, it takes a lot of time. And you uh, file complaints individually against the promoters. Promoters, uh, when they sense the problem, dear friends, they must be having tons of cash. They have thousands of square feet they would have constructed. Nobody will be like that. And they know how to disrupt the process. Individually, it is impossible to fight without the help of uh, adjudicating authorities of this approach. You understand their approach, the, the present approach of the NCLT Chennai bench will certainly uh, give results. Because one, I'm there. I have to pay 60 lakhs, balance 40 lakhs I should pay. And I'm willing to pay another 10 lakhs to complete the construction. So where is the assurance for me? Liquidator is giving assurance. What assurance he can give? And uh, there will be disruptions. Landlord will trouble. And in between the home buyers itself, they'll find. What about the common areas? Who will fund for that common areas? House is ready, but no electricity, no water, no roads. So who will take care of it? There will be litigations. And then the authorities, um, uh, municipal MMDA, uh, all those people will be coming into the picture. How to get this solved? And hindrances. Uh, the uh, labor, uh, the rowdy forces uh, come, come into the picture. Contractors uh, coming, troubling you. Only uh, NCLT can solve. This was not the approach earlier because I've been there right from 2018. But I see that uh, only Prakash Kumar sir was there. There was uh, he was able to visualize that time. No rules were framed and. Uh, the first case we went there, he had explained that when you want a house, how can you ask for money back? Interest. You can ask for compensation. But right now, your duty is to get it completed. Five years back, he said, had they completed and then catch this person. That uh, The fraudulent uh, diversion of funds, that provisions are there, 4966. That uh, court will help you. But ultimately, you get a house. Because always, you know, Today, you are looking at a zero value and uh, you are going to invest 20 lakhs or 10 lakhs and you will get a house worth one crore. That is how the evaluation of the financials have to be made. And that is a precise approach. And uh, I want uh, uh, the home buyers uh, to get aware of it, form associations and come to the Chennai, uh, those people who are around Chennai. I think the same thing must be happening elsewhere also. But... Uh, this is uh, uh, which I thought I'll make a video on this. Thank you, friends.